Okay, so Laura here, welcome to Golf Yoga. Today's focus is on the psoas. Um, and the psoas help us maintain our posture in the golf swing, especially on the downswing through impact. So that's the importance of the psoas and the obliques. And I wanna just kind of show you quickly before we start where the psoas is. So the psoas kind of connects. So first off, it connects the femur bone to this big bone in our thigh into our lumbar. So it connects the upper body and the lower body, right? So it stabilizes your body, it maintains posture through the swing, but it also helps to transfer the power from the body out to the club into the swing through our, you know, our hip turn there. So um, people refer to them as the major and the minor. I'm gonna refer it just to so as period. Um, otherwise it gets confusing. So the minor connects the pelvic to the spine. So that's not so important anymore because we don't walk on our hands and feet. So um, really we're just gonna stay attached to the one that connects upper and lower body. So now that you know where it is, why it's important for golf, we begin. So I'm gonna come down to my mat and let's start with just some breath. So just come and seated on your hip bones. And this is a really nice posture to actually just feel the attachment of the psoas. And you're gonna feel it really quickly when we do a warm up. But for now, I just wanna breathe into the body to welcome in the energy, to welcome in the practice. So find some deep breath through your nose and out through your nose. Do that maybe five more times. And you may discover that there's something lingering in the chest, a heaviness. Just give it the attention that it wants. And you'll find that when you give the attention that it wants, it will generally subside. So the breath is extremely important as we get through the psoas strengthening and stretching today. Because if you hold your breath, you don't get the maximum benefits of what we are working through. Because when you freeze your breath, you also freeze the desirable outcome. Okay, now I'd like you to bring your hands to your hips. Just gently, just push them down and feel that help lengthening your posture up. You should feel that pretty darn quickly. And you may even feel something in your back here. And that's the attachment of your psoas, okay? And then I want you to take a really full inhale here through your nose. And exhale through your nose. And then bring your right hand down to the mat beside your right hip and lift your left arm up. So we're gonna just stretch simply over to the right. So lean into the right hand, send the hip, the left hip out to the left. And just feel that nice release through your obliques and the side of your lats. So the obliques are as active as the psoas muscles are in the golf swing to maintain that posture. So we want to give that some appropriate tension. And those are the muscles on the side of your abdomen. And then go ahead and switch sides. Good job. Right arm up, yep. push into the hand and stretch. And breathe. Good, and then bring the right hand down as well. Okay, bring both hands behind you on the ground and lean into the palms of your hands. Roll the shoulders back and down and just stretch out the front of the chest and bring your gaze up. Push your knees down to the ground and take a full inhale. And then on your exhale, return back to the center of gravity. Good, bring your feet out in front of you. Both toes planted on the ground, both knees pointed up. And then go ahead and just swing the knees to the right and then to the left. So the center of gravity is really important when we talk about the golf swing because it's through the center of gravity that we demand that strength and that force. And it's also the center of gravity that we bring balance into our bodies, which affects the nervous system energetically. So it's, there's a lot going on in the psoas. The next time the knees go to the right, stay there. Bring your hands forward onto the left thigh and just turn your chest slightly over the left hip. Good. 
And then go ahead and without using your hands, switch sides and turn your hands over to the right hip and turn your chest slightly to the right. Good. Okay, and then please transfer your weight to tabletop. So place your hands under your shoulders. If you need a blanket under your knees, please feel free to grab that. I'm going to go ahead and grab it for myself, just so I have some extra support for my knees. Our knees are not meant to be on concrete. So I want you to be comfortable. Okay, so with our hands spread out, send your shoulders back to access a deeper breath and take a full inhale and lift your chest up, lift your tailbone up. And then on an exhale, round the spine, tuck the tailbone in and tuck the chin in. And then two more times, just like that. Inhale and exhale. Now we're already bringing some attention if you pay attention here to the hip flexors to what is happening. Inhale and exhale. Now I want you to stay in a rounded spine and pay attention to the tailbone tucking in, to the hip flexors kind of squeezing together here at the hips. And then from there, I want you to bring the right knee to the center of your chest and really squeeze that right hip flexor in while rounding the spine. Good. And then bring the right knee down, neutralize your tabletop. Take an inhale, lift the tailbone, lift the collarbones, lift the chin, and then round. Exhale, tuck the tailbone in, tuck the chin. Bring the left knee into the center of the chest, and just feel that left hip flexor turning on, or your left psoas muscle turning on. And breathe. And then bring the left knee down, beside the right knee, neutralize your tabletop. Extend the right leg behind you onto the ground. Stretch out your calf and breathe. And then we're going to go into everybody's favorite golf stretch ever. Bring the right foot up and swing it over to the left and onto the ground. Look over the left shoulder and breathe to fill up all of the space in the right hip. Press your hands down into the mat, scoop your belly in, leave the right foot connected, lift the left knee up, turn on the left hip flexor, and then release the left knee down. Bring the right leg back, and lift it all the way up into the sky again. Bend the right knee, lift the knee higher than the hips if possible. Now to feel a stretch in the right hip flexor and then release the right knee down. Good, take a break off the hands and just circle out the wrists. I know everybody likes that. Good. Okay, now we're gonna do this to the other side. Okay, so go ahead and come back in the tabletop. Bring the left leg out behind you, toes into the mat. Good. And just stretch out the calf. Just give it some love. You want the whole body to feel love, not just the silhouette, not just the obliques. Fill yourself up with new patterns for the day of love, appreciation, gratitude for your body, and what you can do at home, right? Good. Then lift that left leg up. And then reach over to the ground. Place the right toes on, I'm sorry, left toes on the floor. And then you know what to do. Look over that right shoulder. And then fill up all of your ribs on the left. Big, big breath. Feel the effects of your energy, of your breath. Good. Stay here with the hands in the left ball of your foot and then challenge yourself as you lift the right knee up to the center of the chest. It's pretty challenging, I know. Bring the right knee down. <laughs> Bring the left knee down to meet the right knee and then shift back, child's pose. Take a break off the wrist. And then I go through six breaths. So we've kind of already felt a few of the postures, the poses that we're going to be feeling. And now you're giving them a nice little warm up as you hold yourself in child's pose with your hips down to your heels of where they're going to feel even more love as we proceed through the flow. Good. Good. 
Okay, and then go ahead and lift all the way up to tabletop. And then come to seated, facing forward on your mat. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and move my blanket out of the way. And I'd like you to grab your yoga block, or your book, or your cereal box, whatever you find at home. Okay, so we've done this one before, right? This isn't new, but it's a nice little warm up just to feel where we are. So place the block, let's say um, on level one, which is just flat, outside of the right leg. Yep, and just place your hands outside of your hips on your fingertips and just find the center of gravity again for your body. So this is super important. Always find the center of gravity before you command any movement within the body. Where is your center? Where is your breath? Okay, then press the legs down into the floor. Turn the skin onto the bones of the legs. And then I'm simply gonna ask you to lift the right leg up without leaning back. Yes. And then lift the right leg up and over the block. Uh-huh. And then lift it up and over the block to meet the left. And we're gonna do that six times. Yep, it's nice and easy. A nice little warm up. And if this is already, you know, okay, Laura, I've done this before. This isn't that challenging. Challenge yourself. Lift the block up on the top side and lift it up. <laughs> lift it up. Good job. Lift it up. Excellent. Okay, and then let's go ahead and switch sides. So go to the level of the block you prefer. Find your center of gravity. Hands to the floor, and then you know what to do. Lift up and over, really activating all of those little muscles within the psoas. It's actually a pretty darn large muscle. I believe it's the largest, don't quote me on that. But I would say it is, knowing that it connects the upper body and the lower body. So I'm gonna challenge myself in the last two or three to go up and high, good. Okay, come back to the right leg. And I want you to keep it on the high setting because you both that I can see are doing really good. Hands are gonna go now, laced in the front of your chest. Find your center of gravity. No leaning back, okay? But imagine if you lean back, then you dump in your lower back because that's what happens when you lose your posture and your swing. And you're gonna feel, it's gonna give you that click. Oh my gosh, you're right, I do that when I golf. Okay, so no leaning back, sit up nice and tall. Lift the right leg up and over the block. <laughs> Good job, and then keep going. We're gonna do six of these, up and over. Nice. <laughs> Lurking smiles like, yeah, I know that feeling. Good. One more, I think. And then we're going to go to the other side. So you're going to see sometimes a little subtle difference between one leg and the other. So again, set up for success. Find your center of gravity. Lift it. Lower it. Good job. Keep it up. Challenge accepted. I love it, ladies. You're keeping up. Don't lean back. Don't lean back. Go dump into the lower back. Scoop the belly in. Come on. Two more. Flex the toes towards the shin. Good. Last one. Excellent. Okay. Take your block. And I want you to place it, I don't know, 12 inches away from the right ankle on its high setting. We'll see what happens. And a little closer, so not extended out. So I hope you can see I'm making like this little circle thing with my body. Find your center of gravity. That might be too far from me. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit more. Okay, lift the right leg up. And all the way over. And all the way over, good. We're gonna do six of these. So you're getting it significantly higher. You just start to feel this right so as you're starting to activate a little bit more and a little bit of your oblique, right? This side muscle. Good. Let's do one more. Keep the left leg pushing down. This is gonna be really important as we transfer to a different exercise. Okay, other side. Come into that same point, find your center of gravity, six of them. Good. Ah, oh, I knocked it down. Told you my left is always subtly different from the right. I'm losing posture and I can feel it, I can see it, right? Good, what do we got? One more, two more. Some of you go, heck no, Laura, my hands are staying down, that's all right. And then bring it back in, okay. Get rid of the block for now. Put it somewhere closer and meet it later. Bring the hands behind you and just let that go. So place your feet on the ground and then windshield wiper, just like before. Just let everything let go. Oh, it feels so nice. Good, and then come back. Back to attention, right? Back to the center. Okay, so you're gonna start with your hands behind you. Maybe I'm gonna go sideways now because I want you all to really see this. 
I want you to press your legs down into the floor, really starting to activate through the muscles here, you know, hugging the skin on. And then you're going to bring the right knee into the chest, and then I want you to cross it over the left ankle, but do not drop it down. Right knee into the chest, as much as you can get it in there, and then cross it over the ankle. We're going to do this six times. Inhale, extend, exhale. Inhale, super slow, connected movement. Exhale. Good. One more. And then right knee into the chest, and then send the right leg out and over that block. Remember that part? So right knee into the chest, and then up and on top that block. Again, right knee into the chest. And out. Come on, don't give up. Suck your bellies in, don't lean back. Good. One more. Oh, are you starting to feel it? I'm going to bring the foot down. Okay, now you know what's going on, so we're going to do the other side too. Left foot, bring it in. Sit up tall. See, I already messed up my address. Address, center of gravity, hands on the floor. Lash me in, and then cross over the right ankle. Here we go, sit. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Good. Two more. Don't lean back, belly in tight. Find those heavy sit bones, and now we go over to that block. Left knee in, and then up over that block. And then left knee in, and up and over that block. Keep going. This is three. So again, if you feel that lower back, it's telling you something. You need work like this because your lower back is still used to taking over. So now you're activating that muscle so that you don't have that lower back pain. Good. And then let that go. Shake it out. All right? Good job. Okay, straddle. I'm going to face sideways so it's a little bit more appropriate. And now you're going to lace your fingers again. I actually want to face sideways this way. So fingers up, hands laced. Center of gravity, demand attention. Okay, and now without using your, you know what? Should I be nice? I'll be nice. Bring your fingertips down, inner thighs. Let's be nice. Press your legs down, right? Make sure that they're strong, connected, anchored to the floor. And then I would like you to bring the right leg up and bend it backwards. Yep, into the right hip. And lift it up and over. Again, lift it, bring the foot outside the right hip, and bring it forward. Okay, so about three of these, right? With the hands down. And then release. Okay, come back to center. Now let's do it with the laced hands. You know what's coming. You know how hard this is. So I want you to look at the left leg. Stay with your eyes on the left leg now because I want you to make sure back doesn't move. Press the left leg deep into the floor. Anchor it. Activate that glute. And then bring that leg back. The right leg and forward. So that left leg you're going to see is going to want to turn out. Eventually, your legs are going to be strong enough. Your psoas is going to be strong enough that the left leg will turn out. That's the goal. Good. Other leg. Here we go. Left leg out. Keep pushing through the right, and we're going to do six of these. If you need the hands down between your thighs, adjust. Good. These are very challenging things, and you're going to feel this. Pretty darn quickly. Two more. If I'm not mistaken, sometimes I don't count right. Good. Ah, and release. Good. Hands down beside you. Feet bent. Let that go. Let it out. Good. Ah. Okay. Now we're going to go back to tabletop. If you need that blanket under your knees, grab that blanket. Okay, so here we are again. This is nothing new. Now let's reset for success. So we have this momentum going, and that can kind of dilute the process, dilute what we're trying to achieve. So let's just take a few rounds of cat cow. So again, you've been here before. Let's just undilute it and get more precise about our movements. Reconnect with our breath in our nervous system because our nervous system is also stored in our hips. It holds deep memory. Let's go one more. Good. And then neutral again. Good. So we've cleaned off the slate. We're back to undiluting things. So we're going to go back to that golfer stretch. Lift the right leg up, 
and bring the toes outside the ground to the left. But this time, I want you to almost come into like a pigeon and lean into that right leg. You're going to feel a stretch through this left hip and then come up. And then lean into that left hip, right? Find, discover, move the hips to the right. Once you get there, come back up. Lean into the left hip, play with that movement, release, and then switch sides. So we're just getting that glute a little active now. Left leg up, golfer stretch, look over. Lean into the right hip, feel that piriformis release, and then come back up, and then lean. Good, and then come back up, and then one more. Good, and then come back up. Good, come back to your butt, and we're gonna come back to snap pose now. So, find your center of gravity. Feel your hip flexors. Push into your sit bones, sit up tall. Good. Okay, and then from here, without using our hands, holding on here so that we don't go into our old patterns, you're gonna lift the right leg up, bring it behind you. But now that left leg is right in the front, and then bring it forward. And now we're gonna switch sides. Lift the left leg up, bring it back, and then switch sides. Okay, we're gonna do six times each one. Good. Okay, now let's add a little bit of a crunch here. So now I want you to crunch towards that left elbow or left knee and then come back up. Over to the right, crunch towards the right knee and come back up. So now we're getting the psoas and the hip flip or the uh, obliques. Good, keep going. Good job. Crunch. Let's do one more each side. Left leg goes back. And then right leg goes back and crunch. Good job. And release. Good job. Okay, come back. Tabletop. So I'd like you to walk your knees back a lot so it's not quite tabletop. And then I want you to come down to your forearms. So I'm going to give you two options here because now we're going to awaken through the obliques that help these hip flexors. So you can do this from your knees, toes untucked, belly in, spine lengthened, and just drop to the right hip and then up and drop to the left hip and up. Or second option, and we're gonna go for 30 seconds, is gonna be a forearm plank, pushing into the arms, drop through the right hip, and drop through the left hip. So, when you're ready to begin, here we go. Take a deep breath, exhale, and begin. So we're gonna get about six paces to each side, left and right, from any level that you can do, just working through the hip and these oblique muscles. Any form of a plank is very effective. It may not be on the top of your list for excitement, but it should be on the top of your list for effectiveness, for posture, right? So keep going. Let's go two more each side. Come on, you got this. One, and two, and good job. And bring the knees down, take a child's pose, give the arms a break. And take a few deep breaths. Just to ride a little deeper. Good. Okay, now we're going to create a little bit of a flow. Take your time. Take four more breaths or so. We're going to come into a little flow to really turn on these hip flexors, the psoas, a little bit more. And then after the flow, we're going to go through the ultimate challenge. So, here we are, tabletop. And then this is our first downward dog. So let's do it really with the tension. Okay, so right now we've got our hip flexors, our psoas, they're, this is where they are, they're activated in this tabletop. And then I want you to lift your hips up, but keep the psoas activated by keeping the knees bent. And find that connection with the belly and the legs. Feel that activation of your psoas. Hug the arms down, bring the gaze between your knees or your ankles. Then straighten the heels or lengthen the legs to get the heels to the floor down. And we're going to just move like that, nice and easy, okay? So inhale, belly to the thighs by bending the knees, and then exhale down the dog. Inhale, exhale. Inhale and bend. Make a connection, exhale. Three more.
Last one. Good job. From here, inhale the right foot flat between your hands. Release the left knee down. Untuck the left toe. Weigh heavy on the top of your right leg. And if you notice my spine, I haven't had much attention into it. I want to show you the difference of lengthening versus just kind of being lazy. So here's lazy. Here's diluted. And then here's undiluted and lengthened. So find that in your body, right? So pulling in, find a deep connection in this right hip flexor, okay? Then I want you to peel your stomach off by pushing into the right foot and dragging the right heel towards your body without moving the foot. Do that to lift the chest up and over the hips. You're gonna feel a huge activation in your psoas muscles. And then exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, lift the arms. Keep that right heel plugging back, exhale. Two more. Exhale, now we're gonna incorporate our obliques. Inhale, exhale, and then lean to the right. Lean into it and feel how that really affects right there. Good. Inhale to center. Exhale and crunch. Two more. Inhale and crunch. Exhale. One more. Inhale. Crunch. Exhale. Inhale the arms all the way up. And then hands flat down to the ground. And then please, if you can, like bring the right shin parallel to the front of your mat. And lengthen the left leg back. And just take a rest here in Pigeon Pose. So since we have our yoga block handy, I'm gonna place mine underneath my right hip so that I can settle all the way down, take a few breaths in Pigeon Pose. So you're gonna feel a nice release here through the hips, left psoas particularly. You've got a strong activation through this right hip flexor still. You can lower your forehead down and just find some smooth breath to support, bring attention to, regulate your balance, your breath, and gravity. Good. And then go ahead and press into the elbows or the arms, the hands, lift up, move the block if you have it there. And send the right leg all the way back to meet the left and lower down to the floor. Okay, just feel that difference as you release that right hip flexor to the left. And let's give that right hip flexor a little bit of love. So bend the right knee. Chin can rest on the hands. And just lift the right leg up, hold there. Lift the right leg up, stretch the right hip flexor. Strengthen a little bit of the right leg, the back of the right leg. And then release the right knee down. Soften. Inhale, lift the right knee up, off the ground. Lift the right quad up and off the ground. Strengthen the back of the leg. And release. And the back of the lower spine. One more time, lift. Good. And lower. Okay, come on to the left forearm and bring it parallel to the mat. Reach back with the right hand and just squeeze that heel towards the right butt cheek. The elbows pointed up and just feel that nice release through the quad and that hip flexor, that psoas. Your gaze can be forward, the chest can open, you can even try to stretch your collarbones out. And then gently release. Ah. Press into your hands, lift up tabletop to child's pose. And then tabletop again. Okay, from here, downward dog, lift up. Yeah, things are getting a little hot, aren't they? <laughs> okay, so our feet are plugged into the floor, and we're gonna go through those six hip flexor turning on activations. So here we are, we're gonna inhale, bend the knees, drop the hips, belly to the leg, and then exhale, downward dog. And then inhale and lower. Exhale, heels down. Four more. Two more. And last one. Good. Left foot flat between your hands. 
And even if you need to pick up the foot and put it up there in time, you will find that that mobility comes and that strength comes. Release the right knee down on the blanket or the mat, whatever you've got. Okay, and then pause again. Pause to find that strong spine, that strong left hip flexor. Good. Then start to drag the left heel back without actually moving the foot, and the right knee kind of activates forward. Use that activation to get into your hips, right? Your psoas to inhale and look up. And keep that activation, that deep, deep lunging into that left hip. Breathing. And then exhaling, gold post arms. Widening the back, belly is tight, good, inhale. Try to unwobble and keep that left knee right over the second toe. Good. Squeeze those thighs together from the inner thigh. Good, and now we add that crunch. Crunching to the left. Obliques activated, inhale. And crunch left, exhale. Inhale, crunch left, exhale. Last one. Good, inhale, arms all the way up. Really pull that left heel into the back of the body. One more moment. And then release. Left shin parallel to the front of the mat. If you need the block under the left hip or blanket, that's okay. And then lower down. Bring lots of attention to the sensation in that left psoas. Notice it talking to you and give it the attention it wants, but with love, with gentleness, with compassion. Don't meet it with the anger, dilute it. Dilute it with compassion for the work it's doing for you. One more full breath in, please. And full breath out. Good. Press into the hands. Lift. Remove the block. Place the hands under the shoulders. And then left leg all the way back. Lower down onto the belly. Okay, rest your chin on your hands. And bend the left knee. Lift the left knee. Stretch it out. Strengthen the back of the left leg. And then loose. And lift. Exhale, let it go. Two more. One more. And release. Good. Okay, bring the right forearm across the chest. Bring the left arm to the left foot. So I grab my foot on the top of it. If that's too much for your upper back, that's fine. Do it any way that's comfortable for you. And then press that heel into the butt. You can look back. Some of you are already doing that. Or you can look forward. This is fair enough with both. Everybody's different. It's not one size fits all. So you're going to do the one that works for you. I'm also pulling the right forearm towards the belly. So dragging it like we did with the heel. And that helps me to stretch even more. Good. And release. Okay. Hands under the shoulders. And let's just get the upper back a little bit of love. It hasn't gotten much attention before I go through the challenge. So hands under the shoulders. Drag the yoga mat back. Lift up the heart. Squeeze the scapula together. Elbows pointed back. And almost trying to get to the floor, but they won't. And then push into the hands, lifting up, seal pose. All the way up, squeeze the shoulders together. And then shift, tabletop, down the dog. Good. Okay, and then look between your hands and just walk all the way to the hands. And then inhale, lift the collarbones up, halfway, exhale, and bow down over the body, reaching with the crown of the head to the floor, tailbone high. And then inhale, look all the way up to standing if you want to lift your arms over your head for a stretch. And then bring your hands to the middle of your body. Good. Close your eyes for a second and regroup. Regroup. Find that center standing of gravity. Check out your feet. Are they under your hips? 
Activate your legs. Feel your posture nice and strong. Maybe closing your eyes and taking a few mindful breaths. Tuning in again to that subtle energy around the center. Good. And then open your eyes. And then I'd like you to find a spot, anything really, a spot, an item in the front of your body. I'm going to go through some balance. I'm going to work with lifting one leg up towards the torso, which is always exciting, isn't it? <laughs> so we're going to keep our hands here. There's this thing that happens with this connection of the hands that I want you to feel within the right foot as well. So your hands are pressing into one another. The right foot is pressing into the floor, growing its roots. And then I want you to lift the left heel, lengthen through the right hip, and then activate the left psoas and lift that left knee up nice and high, as high as you can get it. Good. And then from there, flex the toes towards the shin. Pull the left hip back slightly. And then extend the left out with that hip and socket. Really testing your balance here. Two more breaths. And then right back into that bend with the knee high. Now I know we're getting a little shaky. And then foot to the thigh, tree. Now, if your foot doesn't go up that high, you can keep it down on the ground, whichever one works for you. Keep your eyes on that spot. Good. We have one more. Lift the left knee away from the body and up and hold here. Challenge that hip flexor. So there's, there's gotta be some challenge, right? One more. One knee into the front and release. There we go. Good job. Okay, other side. Set up. Calm the nervous system. Open the eyes when you're ready. And then here we go. Root down through the left, lengthen through the left, lift the right knee up. Lift the right knee up a little higher. Stand tall, stand confidently, flex the right toe towards the shin. Toes. Good. Pull the right hip back a little. Extend the right leg. Keep pulling it back into the hip. Toes flex. Breathe. Good job. Right knee bends again. Tree pose, right foot, left thigh. Deep external rotation of both of your hip flexors. So expanding the psoas wide here, you can almost even feel them. If you poke, your, poke around in here, you can feel those muscle tissues. I know. Foot off the thigh, hold that knee high. Right knee in the front, and release. That side seems to go much smoother, I guess. Okay. Inhale, lift it up. Stretch it. Exhale, right through the middle. Inhale, halfway lift. And then just step it back down the dog. Good. Just take a few breaths in your downward dog. Move your hips freely. Regain that freedom through your hips, liberation. Maybe shifting to a plank in the downward dog a few times. Good. And then the next time that you shift into that plank, which all of you have offered to do, hold. And release. Knees to the floor. Okay, come to seated on your butt. So here's our challenge. This is the moment we've been leading up to, to see if these psoas of ours are up to meet the challenge. So may the forces be with us. So I'm going to start with my right leg out. So, right leg is out, so it's a half straddle, right? The right leg is pushing down, the left knee is bent, and the left heel is, I don't know, about a fifth distance, my heel to my glute. Okay, and then my hands are gonna rock around my shin. You just sit up tall, squeeze your belly in, feel nice and strong. So your left psoas. Now I want you to sink into your left butt and really focus just on the front of the hip. So when you lift up into the hip, 
you kind of roll into the right. So as I want you to drop into the left hip so you can grow tall here. Because it's this left hip that we're going to activate. Okay, then from here, bring the hands behind you on your fingertips. I'm actually going to walk my left foot out an inch or two. It was in the center of my glute, and I need mine to be a little bit out because I'm externally rotated through my hips. I'm going to push down through the right heel just a little, push down through my left foot all the way, and lift up my butt cheeks, both of them. <laughs> push into the left foot like heck. And then walk the right hand forward. Walk the left hand forward and see if that's possible. She's like, oh, I don't know, Laura. <laughs> it's hard. Good job, Olga. Come on, Janet. You got it, girl. Start with your hands in the front and lift up. Hands in the front and lift up. She's like, you're crazy. Okay, bring it down. Good job. Okay. Let the left leg go. Shake it out. Be happy. So that was phase one. Okay, so we're going to do phase one on the second side. So now the right foot comes down, left leg is straddled out, left leg is pushing. You know, get your external right location of your foot and then drop into the right butt cheek a little bit. Just, you know, hey, right hip, hey, right psoas. I believe in you, you got this. We're gonna do this. So my hands are gonna go behind me. I'm gonna lift up my butt and then walk, walk, walk forward. And then try to strengthen through my right so <laughs> Good job. <laughs> and then release. Okay. And let it go. <laughs> okay, we're going to go back to the first side. So, block. Here's my handy dandy block. It's going to come for a ride with me just in case I need some love and assistance here. And that's all right. Listen, this might be the first time we're trying anything like this. So this posture with this um, thing we're doing is a yoga pose actually called skandasana. But the way we are coming into it is really challenging, very strengthening through the psoas. So normally you don't come into it in the way we are doing it. So you're getting double whammy, double extra whammy for your center of gravity. All right, so left leg bends again. You know your setup. You know what you have to do to kind of shimmy your way. So get ready. So I'm gonna use that block to start. I'm going to bring my right hand outside my right hip, push into the left to help guide me, left hand and lift up. That way it should be a little bit easier. And if you have that, no problem, you know, strong, I see that. So you're sitting, I see that on your heel, right? I want you to push into the left foot and rise higher. Push into the left foot, rise higher. There you go, Janet, right? And then come down and then come all the way down. Okay, now the challenge is no hands coming all the way up and all the way down. All the way up and all the way down. One more. Yep, and down. Good, other side. And then the challenge is over. Okay, right foot bends, block in the front, left leg down, right hand behind my hip. You got this, come on. Push into the right foot, lift, transfer the front block. Hands to the front. Push it to the right leg. Get that psoas turned on. And then lower down. We're going to play. You now 10 or so seconds. See what happens up and down. So I challenge you, right? So we've done a lot of activation of the psoas. If you were to try to do this without any warm-up, without any that activation of the psoas, attention there, it is hard. <laughs> So imagine now, you don't do your warm up before you go golfing, you just show up and expect yourself to play like the king of the hills. It's not very effective. So all these little things build to help you. So, good job. Place the block off to the side and come all the way down to your backs. And relax. Ah, let up the side. And taking a few deep breaths. Good. And then from here, I'd like you to bring the bottoms of the feet together close to the pelvic and let the knees go wide. Diamond pose on your backs. And just bring your hands right on top where the psoas is located, you know, by that groin area going up into the belly. Just place the heat of the hands there. 
And just receive that feedback, that heat, that soothing effect of the touch. And just breathe in and then breathe out, salty. And then please bring the knees together. I wonder if you can hear that rain in the background now. I love the rain. It's so calm. Bring the knees together and this time walk the feet out wide. And collapse the knees towards one another. Put your hands still here if that's okay. And just breathe, bring that softness to the attachment of the psoas and the spine. Good. And then bring the feet flat to the mat so the knees point up. And bring the right knee into the chest. Just the right knee. Keep the left knee where it is. And then take the right hand. And if you can, grab the outside of the right foot. Place the left hand back on your hip. And then pull the knee towards the armpit so that the right foot is facing the ceiling completely. So the bottom of the right foot is fully exposed and straight towards the ceiling. And breathe. Good. And then from here, extend the left leg straight. And feel that nice deep release. Bring the right leg down to meet the left leg. And just take a breath. Good. Bring the feet to make contact flat with the mat. Bend the knees. Walk the feet out wide at the yoga mat. Bring the left knee into the chest and hold on to the shin. Soften through the shoulders. And then take the left hand and grab the outside of the left foot. Bring the right hand back down to the hip. And try to get that left foot exposed straight to the ceiling. And really feel this in your left psoas. And then go ahead and release the right leg straight down to the mat. You just feel that different subtle sensation in the subtle movement. And then release the left leg to meet the right leg. Take another intermission. Okay, bring both knees into your chest, please. Feeling that elasticity here in these hips. And then extend the legs straight up to the sky. Toes flex towards the shins, hands on the floor. And then try to pull your femur bone into your spine, into your hip sockets, with just the gentle understanding and knowledge now that it's the psoas that connects the femur to the spine. So just give that lots of well-deserved recognition. And then bend the knees, bring the feet flat to the floor. Let's just do a nice smooth release of the front of the hips. Press into the feet, lift the hips up and off the ground, push into the upper arms, stretch it, and then slowly transition. Knees now 
point it up, back supported to the ground. Allow both of the knees to gently fall to the right as you look over the left shoulder. Being pleased with the work that you've accomplished. And then the knees back up and over to the left. Looking over the right shoulder if that's comfortable. And then again, knees back up and extend the legs out, Shavasana. And just take a couple of minutes, if time allows you, a well-deserved break, rest from the hard work that you've done already this morning on and off of your yoga mat. The mighty psoas muscle not only have the force of the physical power within them, they also have the ability to help relax the nervous system. So feel that balance, that center of gravity restored within the center of your body, within the center of the psoas. Balanced, balanced, balanced. Now you can stay here for up to five, 10 minutes, as long as the day allows you. With your eyes soft. Feeling all of this transition aiding you to have a strong, proper posture, not only in the golf swing, but throughout the day, when you start to feel like your energy is low, you start to dunk into our spines. Feel that vitality finding itself back into you. And when you start to feel heavy, Know that within you, with your mind, your strength, you can come back and surface with confidence. So now start to resurface and feel the skin on the top of your body. Feel the muscles beneath the skin. The tendons, the ligaments that attach the muscles to the bones. And all of these subtle energies within it. Begin to awaken and move your knees, bend. And find yourself slowly onto one side of your mat. Coming all the way up to seated. If you're comfortable, bring your hands to the center of your hearts, bowing down to your practice, the vital psoas muscles, connection to the physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. May your golf game be as terrific as your yoga practice was today. Namaste.